properties of indifference curves the first property is the indifference curve is downward sloping from left to right just like the demand curve indifference curve also slopes from left to right also slopes downward from left to right now why does it slope downward from left to right there is a logic to it we know that the indifference curve gives us the combination of the two goods that we need to consume and all these combinations give us the same level of satisfaction now when these combinations are giving the same level of satisfaction if i increase the consumption of one commodity i will have to decrease or reduce the consumption of other commodity so as to maintain the same level of satisfaction if i increase the consumption of both the commodities my satisfaction level has to certainly go up and when this happens i will shift to some other indifference curve so if i have to be on the same indifference curve the consumption of one good will lead to the fall or reduction in the consumption of other good and thus it is always downward sloping from left to right the indifference curve is convex to the origin i know that the indifference curve is downward sloping from left to right yet the shape of the indifference curve is convex to the origin we have already done this point when we learned ppc in case of ppc the shape of the ppc is concave to the origin we did the logic there we again did this when we were studying the law of demand in the law of demand we studied that the demand curve is convex to the origin in case of indifference curve we've learned that the mrs is always falling or decreasing now when the mrs or the opportunity cost is falling or decreasing with different combinations the slope has to be convex to the origin in case of ppc the mrs goes on increasing and since the mrs goes on increasing it is concave to the origin what do you think would be the shape of a curve if the mrs is constant correct when the mrs is constant the curve will be linear it will be in the form of a straight line thus the shape of the indifference curve is convex to the origin because the mrs is always falling the next property is higher indifference curve represents a higher level of satisfaction than the lower indifference curve now in this now in this graph we have three indifference curves ic1 ic2 and ic3 ic1 is the lowest indifference curve and ic3 is the highest indifference curve while ic2 lies in between both of them now it is important to note here is ic2 and ic3 are higher than ic1 which implies they'll give more level of satisfaction how because the consumption at ic2 and ic3 will be more than the consumption at ic1 let's take an example this is a point a 
on IC1, wherein these many units of X are consumed and these many units of Y are consumed. Let's name them as, let's quantify them as 100 and 10. So, 100 units of X and 10 units of Y are consumed at point A. Now, if I want to maintain the same level of consumption, I cannot be on the same indifference curve. How? Because if I maintain the same level of consumption of good X, to be on IC2, I will have to consume more units of good Y. I maintain my consumption of X, but I could not maintain my consumption of Y because IC2 is higher. Even though the consumption of X did not change, the consumption of Y had to change. So, point B becomes on a higher indifference curve, wherein point A and point B are not equal. Point B will give me a higher level of satisfaction because I am consuming more units of Y here. And since more units of Y are consumed, they will give me additional utility. In the same way, if I maintain the consumption pattern of Y, if I keep my consumption of Y constant and I want to be on the indifference curve too, I want to be on the IC2. So, I will have to increase the consumption of good X. The good X will have to be consumed more because the consumption of Y is kept as it is. Now since good X is consumed more, it will give me a higher level of satisfaction. In both the cases, points B and point C are giving me a higher level of satisfaction than point A. And it is important to note that these both points lie on the higher indifference curve. So we can imply that a higher indifference curve gives a higher level of satisfaction. Just to add to it, if there is a point D, E and F on IC3, can we conclude that these points will give me a higher level of satisfaction than B and C? Yes, we can. Because these points D, E and F lie on the highest indifference curve. They are on an indifference curve which is higher than IC2. They are on IC3. So they will give me more satisfaction. Next property is two indifference curves never intersect each other. Why do you think two indifference curves will never intersect each other? This implies two indifference curves are parallel. Why do you think they will be parallel? I will tell you why. We have given you a diagram. In this diagram, we have shown two indifference curves, IC1 and IC2. And they both are intersecting each other. Let's assume that they intersect each other and we will prove that this cannot happen. Let's see how. On IC1, you have point A and you have point B. So, utility at point A will be equal to utility at point B. Likewise, on IC2, utility at point A 
will be equal to utility at point C because IC2 has two points A and C. So in short A equals to B because it is on IC1. Both these points are on IC1 so they will give the same level of satisfaction. Again A is equal to C. Again A and C are on IC2. They both are on the same indifference curve. So they both will give the same level of satisfaction. By this logic A equals to B equals to C. Which means B and C are equal. That is the utility derived at point B and the utility derived at point C both are equal. But in the diagram you can see that these two are distinct points. They lie on distinct or different indifference curves and thus the utility on these two curves cannot be same because C is on a higher indifference curve. So C has to have a higher level of satisfaction. B is on a lower indifference curve. So B will give you a lesser amount of satisfaction. But because of our assumption that these curves are intersecting each other, we have come out with the conclusion that utility derived at point B is equal to the utility derived at point C, which is incorrect. Thus, our assumption that the curves or the indifferent curves intersect each other is incorrect. So we can conclude that no two indifference curves can intersect each other. All the indifference curves would be parallel on an indifference map. The next property is indifference curve will never touch the axis. Indifference curves do not touch the axis simply because indifference curves are those curves which give me the combination of two goods giving the same level of satisfaction. These goods give you the combination and when it gives you the combination it has to be two goods but when it touches the y axis let's say at point B there the amount or the quantity of good X is zero. That means you are consuming only the good Y and when you are consuming only the good Y it is not a combination. So indifference curve will never cut the axis. Likewise it will not cut the X axis because when it cuts the X axis you are consuming zero units of good Y and you are consuming only good X and thus again this does not give you a combination of goods. So indifference curves will never cut the axis or touch the axis. Now let's just summarize what we've done in indifference curve. The first property is the indifference curve slopes downward from left to right just like a demand curve. Second property is it is convex to the origin. It is convex to the origin because the marginal rate of substitution keeps falling. Two indifference curves never intersect each other. No two indifference curves can intersect each other. They are always parallel. Higher indifference curve represents a higher level of satisfaction. We've already proved this point. No indifference curve will touch the axis, be it x axis or y axis, because indifference curve always has to give you combination of goods. When it is touching the axis, that means you are consuming only one good. So it is not a combination. 